Machinery's handbook is a workshop staple all across America. Kennedy even put a special drawer in their machinist chest designed just to hold this book. It's considered by many to be a shop Bible, containing a wealth of specifications, standards, materials, and methods. But why is it called Machinery's Handbook? Shouldn't it be called Machinist's Handbook? It turns out there was another book out there called the American Machinist Handbook, which came out six years before Machinery's. To figure all of this out, we got a couple interconnected stories to tell. Before there was Machineries, there was American Machinist. American Machinist was a weekly trade publication for the machine building industry, featuring articles on machining, metallurgy, shop management, and standardization. Founded in 1877 in New York City by Horace B. Miller and Lycurgus Moore, with chief editors Jackson Bailey and Frank Hemingway. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, a young machinist named Fred Colvin was working for the Rue Manufacturing Company, a plant that made injectors for locomotive steam engines. In 1885, the owners of the Rue plant gave a tour to James Hobart, a correspondent for American Machinist magazine. Colvin was a fan of the magazine, and he struck up a conversation with Hobart. Hobart suggested that Colvin write up some of his machine shop tips and tricks and mail them into the editor of American Machinist. Colvin did just that, and in April of 1886, his article on a shop-made riveting tool was published in American Machinist. He also received a check in the mail for $2.50. Over the next few years, Colvin dreamed of being a writer for American Machinist, and he continued to send in articles, occasionally being thrown a few dollars if the article got published, but he never got officially hired. During the Depression of 1893, he lost his day job as a machinist. Things weren't looking too good for Colvin. But then in 1894, he received a letter from another New York publisher, Alexander Lukers, inviting him to work on a new project which would pay $30 a week. Born in 1854 in Quincy, New York, Alexander Lukers attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and started a career as an architect. However, in 1883, he left that career behind to found his own publishing company, Industrial Press, in New York City. In 1894, Lukers set out to publish a monthly magazine called simply Machinery. Machinery would be in direct competition with American Machinist, but all these publishers seemed to be pretty friendly with each other, and when Lukers needed a head editor for his new magazine, he consulted with Frank Hemingway, the chief editor at American Machinist, who recommended that he hire Fred Colvin. Colvin then moved to New York and, facing a two-week deadline, worked 12 15-hour days getting the first issue ready. In September of 1894, the first issue of Machinery was published. The lead article was written by Colvin and was on the Cramps Shipyards in Pennsylvania. Colvin worked as chief editor for Machinery until he left the company in 1897. Machinery would go on to be published in four different editions, a shop edition, an engineering edition, a railway edition, and a foreign edition. In 1912, Lukers teamed up with Julius Springer to have articles from Machinery published in the German magazine Werkstatt... We're, we're, we're just not going to try and pronounce that. Deal with it. Back at American Machinist Press, things were changing. In 1888, they added a second magazine, Locomotive Engineer, promoting their Pueblo, Colorado correspondent John A. Hill to run the magazine. John Hill would purchase Locomotive Engineer from American Machinist in 1892 with the help of another man, Angus Sinclair. Hill and Sinclair would go on to purchase American Machinist as well in 1896. 
But a year later, Hill and Sinclair would split up, with Hill taking control of American Machinist and Sinclair taking Locomotive Engineer. But Sinclair now needed a new editor for Locomotive, so he reached out to Fred Colvin. Colvin initially refused the offer, feeling a loyalty to Machinery Magazine and Industrial Press, but he was convinced to switch ships after receiving the blessing of his boss, Alexander Lukers. Colvin took the helm of Locomotive Engineer Magazine, and at the turn of the century would take on a second Sinclair publication, Automobile Magazine. However, Colvin often clashed with Angus Sinclair. Allegedly, Sinclair spent most of his time overseas, staying out of the day-to-day -day operations of the magazine. But whenever he'd show up at the office, he'd immediately try to start micromanaging things. In 1902, Colvin had had enough, and he straight up quit. It wasn't until 1907 that he received his next opportunity, though one he had been waiting for ever since he had mailed in that first article back in 1885. John A. Hill asked him to take over as chief editor for American Machinist. Now known as the Hill Publishing Company, they had at least five magazines going at the time, American Machinist, Engineering News, The Engineering and Mining Journal, Coal Age, and Power. At American Machinist, Colvin teamed up with associate editor Frank A. Stanley and published a series of kink books. Now, seriously, they were called the Hill Kink Books. Back then, kink meant something more like tips. This led the two to an idea for a shop handbook covering the entire field of machine shop practice. And in 1908, the first American Machinist Handbook was published. The full title of the book was <gasps> American Machinist Handbook and Dictionary of Shop Terms, a reference book of machine shop and drawing room data, methods, and definitions. The book proved popular, and over 36,000 copies of the first edition were sold from 1908 through 1914. Meanwhile, back at Industrial Press, after Colvin left, two other men, Eric Oberg and Franklin D. Jones, took over editorial duties at Machinery. Oberg and Jones also had the idea to consolidate the magazine's technical data into a handbook. This volume would be published in 1914 as Machinery's Handbook. The full official title being... <gasps> Machinery's Handbook for Machine Shop and Drafting Room, a reference book on machine design and shop practice for the mechanical engineer, draftsman, toolmaker, and machinist. Over 30,000 copies were sold in the next two years, and Machinery's Handbook would go on to become the shop staple that it is today. The book was given a small form factor to allow it to fit into toolboxes and featured rounded corners to prevent snagging in a shop environment. Early examples had real gold leaf applied to the page edges to prevent soiling by greasy shop fingers. Thumb cutouts were added to make it easy to flip to a given section in the book, but during World War II, the thumb tabs were omitted to speed up production due to increased demand. In 1998, a large print edition was introduced for people with boomer eyes, and a smaller pocket companion volume also exists for quicker access to the most popular data, as well as a CD-ROM digital version. Machinery the Magazine would be discontinued in 1973. However, Industrial Press continues to produce a revised version of Machinery's Handbook every few years. The company is currently run by Alex Lukers, the great-great-grandson of the founder. So, what happened to that other book, American Machinist's Handbook? That book would go through eight editions from 1908 to 1945, at which point over 500,000 copies had been printed, but the book was discontinued in 45. There was an attempt at reviving the book ten years later in 55, rebranding it as the New American Machinist Handbook. The 55 edition has been reprinted a few times since, but no updated version has ever been made. 
Fred Colvin retired in 1937. Most of the information in this video came from his biography, 60 Years with Men and Machines, which he published in 1947. I'll put a link to that book in the video description. American Machinist Magazine is surprisingly still around, although it switched to digital only in 2013. It's now owned by McGraw-Hill Publishing. Yeah, John Hill's company merged with James McGraw's in 1909, forming the McGraw-Hill Company, which is still a huge publishing house today. So maybe McGraw-Hill just wanted to focus on other things, and with Colvin retired, they gave up on American Machinist Handbook. Either way, Machinery's Handbook won out, and it's the dominant book found in workshops today. Anyway, that's the full story of Machinery's Handbook and its competitor, American Machinist Handbook. Be sure you're subscribed for the next Tool Lore episode. Thanks everyone for watching. See you later. Bye.